Today we're going to look at my Caridina bee shrimp setup because I'm having an awful lot of success breeding shrimp right now and I thought I would share with you all the things that I do, the processes I do like feeding, water changes and whatever else. Right? So I've already fed the tanks, I'm going to show you the, the actual each individual shrimp tank themselves and then we're going to go over my thinking behind the way I organise my tanks for breeding. Let's get started. Right? So my basic setup is this, right? I have my breeder tanks on the top here and then I have my grow out tanks in the middle and then I have my bigger cull tank at the bottom right on. Guys, I don't kill shrimp as you all know. All my culls will eventually go into this tank and they can just live their life out there forever, right? I do have one exception here where I have a blue bolt tank here and it's grow out tank right next to each other. It's just because I didn't have the space at the time when I was making my setup. Right, so the thinking, as I said, is to have our shrimp breeding up here we remove all the young when they get to one centimetre in size to our grow tanks here and then we see if the tank, if the shrimp is actually going to be good enough to keep for further breeding or selling on or whatever, right? So they go from here to the cult tank and then the females will always normally go back to the breeding tank, even the ugly ones guys, because you can get some nice looking shrimp still if you have a nice male in the breeding tank, they mate with the female and then you get more good shrimp again, right? So the only ones that you should really look for to remove are the ugliest of males or all the males basically from the breeding. Right guys, let's do this in a nutshell as well. In my setup in the top, I like to have a lot of females. You're talking between five and 10 females per one male shrimp, right? So you want a really, really good male shrimp and then you want as many females in the tank as possible. And that's how you get loads of baby shrimp. Right, and then from there, all the babies are actually uh, grown out into these tanks here. And it, the only way I can think of it, guys, you've heard me explain this before, and it's, it's basically to do with if you imagine that, like there's a farmer's field, right, and you've got one field with 10 cows in it, right, and they're all munching away in the grass. Soon that grass gets depleted, right, but if you have another field with a grass in it, and you put the young from the first field into it, they grow faster. That's the basic thinking behind it, right? So, Let's now have a look at the tanks because yeah, my tanks are coming alive with shrimp. There's tons and tons of babies. They're more active than I've ever seen them. So yeah, let's have a little look. These are the black and red fancy tigers. I think these are absolutely gorgeous. They're pumping out babies constantly. The ones that you see in here, guys, the ones that are around about one centimeter, actually need to go down into the grout tank below. And yeah, we already have about 30 or 40 shrimp to grow out tank already and there's more babies in here that need to be moved again because yeah, I can see fresh newborns in the moss and stuff and if we don't move them then they will stay smaller for a while. Right? So these are my mixed bee shrimp which means that they are mostly crystal reds, crystal blacks and goldens. Right, so here you can see quite a few females, big and buried. There's an awful lot of the young that need to go to the grow tank as well and yeah these guys have been fantastic breeders for me so if, if any of you want a starter shrimp to get try and get something like a crystal black or a crystal red that has um, v, the golden genetics in them as well and you'll have lots and lots of breeding success too right? so what I do with this guys is I actually separate these into their own tanks below so I have a tank for goldens I have a tank for crystal blacks and I have a tank for crystal reds. These are all grow out tanks. Okay shrimplets, this is another crystal red shrimp tank but in this case I'm actually using some super crystal reds uh, females in here as well. And my thinking behind this is I'm actually reverse engineering my super crystal reds so that the, when they have young they will have normal crystals but they will be of uh, very very good quality. So you can see here none of these guys in here have been called yet. Right? So these are still the babies that are uh, still to be selected for um, our grow -out tank. You can see goldens in there as well. And yeah these guys will be selected out for a uh, pattern and colour. Mostly I go for colour but you can see here how gorgeous this super crystal red is here. The Santa grade super crystal red. And yeah, the, this tank has uh, like baby after baby boom after baby boom. So I've been very lucky with this tank. This was an Akadama tank, guys, that I thought was actually finished a long time ago. And it turns out that I was probably 
more or less just overfeeding the tank and doing too many water changes. This is my grout tank for my fancy a bee shrimp. I'm just going to call them fancy bee shrimp because they're fancy red or black. There's mostly black ones in here but you will see the odd red one. You can also see the, the hybrids that come from these as well. You see a lot of pintos, you see the odd King Kong. So that gives you a little bit of an indicator of, of what these actually come from. So they're probably a Taiwan bee and something else mixed together. And yeah, you can see what I'm doing here guys is actually really working. When you see the numbers in the breeder tank, the first one that I showed you in this video, and then you see the numbers here, the theory behind moving the small babies out to a grow out tank really really is worth the while right because they do grow much much faster. This is another crystal tank but the difference between this crystal tank and the other one I showed you is this is actually a breeder tank as well you can see the amount of babies that I have in here. Um, it's just in my room it's in the wrong order because this should be on the top shelf not, not the middle shelf but this is something I'll fix in the future just to make it a little bit easier for myself but you can see there's lots of babies here and they're all different grades and there's buried shrimp so yeah you want to feed your shrimp as little as possible to keep them in breeding condition while you maintain the water quality and you'll end up with colonies like this guys okay shrimplets this is my grow out tank for my goldens and you can see they're almost at adult size already here you won't see babies here because as I said this is a grow out tank so these are young that have been moved to this tank with the promise of growing up bigger and nicer and yeah they're pretty nice I would say so far and having a grow tank like this guys is a good way to see what sex they are as they get a little bit bigger some of them are almost at the sex in size but I think it's probably just a little bit too early and the other thing as well is this tank was a newish tank it's only about a month or two old so this is the actual first feeding this tank has ever gotten but you don't want to overfeed your tanks at all the more food you put in that they don't eat is just pollution as far as I'm concerned right so keep on top of your feeding and you'll have lovely shrimp like this. This is actually my grow out tank for my crystal black shrimp but you can see in the bottom there there's a definitely a hybrid in here that's probably come from a, a, a German spotted pinto at one point. You see the one at the very bottom with the two big patches on his head so this just shows you that even when you come back to uh, splitting up and selective breeding like this you still get the odd little oddball like this basically and I, I think they're gorgeous it just adds something different to the tank but, but as I'm saying that this tank is meant for just growing out crystal black right? so this one in this case for this tank would be a cull right? anything that is really really poorly marked will be or poorly coloured I should say but I always get mixed up when I'm saying things on camera but I always tend to go for colour first and then pattern because you can have the best pattern in the world if the colour is awful it doesn't, it's just not, it's not worth keeping basically, right? This is the grow tank for my crystal red shrimp. Right, so what that means when I keep on saying grow tank is you won't see any young in here, not any babies unless they've actually been born in this tank, but these are uh, young that have been moved here from the, the first crystal red shrimp tank that I showed you with the, with the super crystal red, and there's quite a lot of nice ones in here I would say already, so it's looking very, very promising. Guys, the reason if you're wondering why I'm using a Super Crystal Red is because I believe that they were made from pure red light, right? So they have the genetics in them to become, to reverse engineer, I mean, a very, very nice Crystal Red trim. So that is what our plan is here. Looking over there, I think that, that one there on this side, dead center of the screen, is a girl and it looks like she is, she is buried yet. So it just goes to show, I only put these shrimp in here as a grow out tank maybe a month ago and they're already buried. And uh, yeah, some of them are really, really gorgeous. I love it. This is my super crystal red shrimp tank and yeah, they, this, they never stop breeding. You can see in here lots of buried shrimp. And yeah, they just constantly breed, right? So I do actually have a grow out tank next to them, but I haven't fed it today because I think it's still a little bit early for me to feed the tank. And yeah, I, I don't want to get into the habit of what I used to do guys is feeding tanks just for views for you guys to see. I'm not going to do that anymore. So I haven't fed the tank because I believe it's still too early. They're still getting used to the tank, but you'll see them in the future. These are doing gorgeous. Here's the babies. Up. There's some, you see all the little babies in between? So I have to start actually moving some of these guys as well because a lot of them will just be immature males and whatever. 
Alright guys, this is my uh, breeding blue bolt tank and you see that they've had baby shrimp already. Some of these are actually at the size where I should be removing them to the grow out tank. You see all the ones, anything over one centimetre, which a lot of these are, you should be moving to your grow out tank. But my grow out tank isn't quite ready yet and there's not bazillions of blue bolts in here to begin with so we can wait a little while longer. I'm just waiting for my other tank that's on the right hand side of this one that you're watching now to fully finish its cycle right so guys I'm aiming for a good six weeks to two months for cycle time with bee shrimp. This is my grow tank right it is very very sparsely populated so far and yeah there is a lot of room in this tank right so this is where I put all my males in here that don't make the grade and anything that is just like a bad colour or has a bad pattern or something like that but right see but here's guys is a good example of what you shouldn't do right see here I put food in the tank to get them to come to the front but there's bazillions of algae and whatever else in here so you shouldn't really feed a tank like this this is something I'm learning as well is if you have a lot of algae in a tank you really really don't need to feed it that much if anything at all so that is how I'm able to breed loads and loads of shrimp. It's because I'm adhering to this advice that I'm giving you now is don't feed the tank if you have a lot of algae. So there you have it guys. There is how I'm mass breeding bazillions of shrimp. Right? Keep on top of your feeding. Only feed when absolutely necessary. I'm going to tell you again. Right? What I do is I feed a solid food once a week, which is on a Saturday, which is today. And then through the week guys, I will actually feed one single time a match head amount of powdered food into each tank for the baby shrimp as well right and this is also very important uh, when looking at your tank guys if you have loads and loads of algae right you're either doing one or two things you're either doing uh, too much uh, food you're putting too much food into the tank or you're not doing a lot of water changes right so for us bee shrimp keepers that have an active soil because this only applies to us you want to do as minimal a water change is possible so that means for us to keep our water as clean as possible you're going to have to feed the tank as little as possible as well because right? this this all this will actually help your tank last longer as well the less food you put in because guys shrimp actually don't need to eat that much in the first place it's different if you have neocaridinas and you're actually able to do massive water changes and throw tons of food in and you have bazillions of shrimp right? it's not quite the same when you have an active soil right because it actually has a lifespan Shrimplets, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have a great Saturday and I'll see you on the next one. Like and subscribe. Love you loads. Bye.